Good evening. evening. If you'll turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. Matthew, chapter 16. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 12 this evening. Uh, Again, it is an honor to be with you tonight. You know, it's it's always an honor to to be welcome to uh, preach at a place once, but it really is an honor to be asked to preach at a place again. So, uh, glad to be here with you again tonight to see what the Lord has to open for you, uh, to open up for us uh, this evening. Uh, You know, in in America, people think that we have it easy here in in America. And we think, and uh, people think that us here in America, that we just have everything just goes smoothly and hunky-dory and everything's great. But you know what? We in America go through a lot of problems and trials. We have, we go through a lot of problems. We call these things First world problems. Any of y'all ever had to deal with first world problems? Like just the other day, I walked up to a vending machine and I didn't have a bill small enough to put anything in there, so I didn't wasn't able to get anything to eat. Look, man, we, we got we got big problems. Man, have you ever been into a, a restaurant or, or, or in a building and there ain't no place to plug in your cell phone? Look, buddy, we, we go through some stuff here in America. Look, have you ever, have you ever had this problem, that uh, your house is so big you can't get a good Wi-Fi signal in your kitchen. Look, look, we we go through major problems here in America. And us as Christians, look, people think that us as Christians, when, when we have it easy and everything just goes smooth, look, but we have some serious problems that we have to go through. We have Baptist problems. All right, we have Baptist problems. Have you ever walked into church and somebody's already done tucking up the front row, I mean, took up the back row, so you have to sit on the front. That's horrible. That is horrible. Have you ever been, uh, as the preacher, and I ain't called no names, Wesley Hughes, ever preached so long, ever preached so long that you get to restaurant and you have to wait in line behind the Methodist? Look, that's, that is, <laughs> that is horrible. I heard one time he preached so long, y'all got in line behind the Pentecostals. I don't know. That's just what I heard. That's just what I heard. Look, and have you ever had this problem? The offering plate goes by, and you go to give your tithe, and uh, they don't have enough change in there, so you have to give the whole dollar. Look, buddy, we have, we, well, look, man, Pastor, we got problems. Look, man, we go through some stuff. It's hard. It's hard. But in our scripture today, the disciples are going to experience the number one Baptist problem that we face. And that is the fear that we may not have enough food. Look, it's a serious thing. I don't know how it is up here in your church, uh, but at our church, running out of food at a covered dish is like the number one fear to which we face. Look, man, we have these uh, nice old ladies who serve on our hostess committee, and, and look, they are diligent. And you go in there, we've got this covered dish planned for after church, and you go back there, and we got more chicken than KFC. Look, we got every casserole that is known to man. I mean, we have bean casserole, corn casserole, turkey casserole, chicken casserole, casserole casserole. We got it all. Look, man, we have every vegetable known to the human race just piled up there. Look, and we got piles everywhere. And look, we got this nice old lady We got this nice old lady who served in our church for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, she's been in the hostess committee so long that uh, she actually helped pass out the manna and the quail to the children of Israel. And um, anyway, and and she's just back there, and uh, she's one of our our, our deacon's wives, and she's just back there. I don't think we're going to have enough food. What if we run out of food? And of course, her husband's the deacon, and she's all, I mean, he's always very supportive for us. And he goes, Well, as long as everybody gets ahead of the youth minister and the pastor, we ought to be all right. <laughs> we go through a lot of troubles and problems in our life, and some of them are, are big and, and some of them are small. But uh, regardless of what it, it seems that we face at the time, at the time, those things to seem to be very big in our life as we need and as we desire these things. But if we are not careful, the same thing that happened to the disciples will happen to us. And that is we will be consumed with our needs 
and lose our focus on Jesus. So let's see what the Word of God has for us this afternoon. Let's, uh, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 16. Let's start with, uh, let's, well, let's uh, start with verse number 1 in Matthew chapter 16. It says, And the Pharisees and the Sadducees came, uh, came to test him. They asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when, is, when, is it, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the, sky is, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but yet you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except for the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, Oh, oh, little faith. Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five lo- the, uh, the loaves and the five thousand? How many baskets were gathered? Or the seven loaves and the four thousand? And how many baskets were gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that you did not that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your day, for this day. Lord, we just thank you so much for your word, Lord, and how it guides our life. Lord, and I just pray, Lord, during this time, Lord, that we just open our hearts to what you have for us. Lord, that we focus, Lord, on the things to which we really need. Lord, and we just focus on our relationship with you. Lord, just open my mouth, Lord, and give me the words to say. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Have you ever been really, really hungry before? Do you know how uh, being hungry, it just sort of distracts you? It just sort of pretty much just consumes you where you just really can't function if you're just really hungry. You're just uh, forgetting things and, and uh, you're, you're not able to do the things that you ought to do. As a matter of fact, uh, Snickers, you know, you, you, they show these commercials to where these people are just getting off track and, and these people are just losing and forgetting who they are. And they said, uh, hungry, you better grab a Snickers. And once they get that Snickers and once they get that food in their mouth, they can just seemingly, seemingly focus But it seems to us that when we have deep hungers and when we have deep desires and things that we need in our life, those things tend to consume us. And what was happening here with Jesus and his disciples is that his disciples, they were going from place to place and Jesus was teaching and they were going across the river, back across the river, teaching to this crowd and to teaching this crowd and and, up. and uh, and doing various things. And it was an important time of teaching that Jesus was doing in their life. And so as they're having these crowds, Jesus kind of finally has some alone time with them. And he's just had this encounter with these uh, these Pharisees and Sadducees who are trying to test him and who are trying to get him and his ministry off track. So it was a very important time of teaching. And so he sits them down and he gives them this little bit of instruction. He says, to them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. But they were hungry and they were so consumed with their present need in their life that they missed it. And if we're not careful in our life that we will be so consumed with our perceived needs, we will get so consumed with meeting our physical needs and, and, uh, and all these things that we think that we need to have the substance of life that we will miss what it is that we really need. And what it is that we really need is the instruction of Jesus Christ. And so they were so focused 
They were so focused on their need, they were hearing what they wanted to hear. You ever noticed in, in, in a sermon when you go to, to preach a message, and every time we read it, the first thing it says, how does this apply to me? How does this verse, how does this message going to accomplish what I think I need? And what I think I need is I need to take care of family, I need to have money, I need to get this job, or I'm going through this situation. How does this fit me in what I think I need. And what we miss is what we truly need in our life. And I'll give this example. As Jesus went through all of these places, He had sick people who would come up and want it to be healed. He had hungry people to which would come up would be fed. He had dead people that would come up and be risen. He would have people who had demons and He would cast them out and they would all come around Jesus. Jesus, fix this need in my life. Jesus, fix this need in my life. Jesus, do this for me. But not one of them came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, give me salvation from my sins. Not one of them. And this is a point of time in Jesus' ministry where things were going to stop turning from the crowds and start working away towards the cross. And if you read these next couple of stories that precede, what has happened is Jesus is beginning to get annoyed with some of this. That all it seems that the people want is for me to put the beard in the red coat on and get up in my sleigh and come bring them stuff. And they were forgetting and they were neglecting what it is that they truly need. You see, there are needs that are deeper in our life. We all need food. We all, you know, we all need these things in our life. And he's not saying that he's bad, that they're bad. But what he is saying is, is that there are more pressing needs in our life. And if we get so consumed with these physical needs, then we will lose track of what it is that we really, really need. And the second thing that happens when we get so consumed with those physical needs is that we forget God's care for us. Is that we forget God's care for us. They're going up and they're saying, we need food. And they're discussing it. Who's got the food? We need food. Somebody go get us some food. What? He's talking about some food. He's got some food. Where's some food? And Jesus hears their conversation. And he says... You of little faith. He said, don't you remember? Don't you remember the loaves and the fish and the 5,000? Don't you remember the loaves of the fish and the 4,000? Don't you remember those stories? We get so busy chasing after those things for ourselves that we Forget God's care in our life. God knows what you need. God knows that you need food. God knows that you need clothes. God knows that you have sickness in your life. You don't have to tell them. He is busy caring for you. Ever since the beginning of creation, God has been caring for you. When He created the world, He created everything around us so that we would be cared for. He gave us oxygen to breathe. He gave us plants for animals to eat. And the animals eat the plants and then we eat the animals. And He gives all those things. He gives us food. He has the temperature up just right. Never too high even though we think it's too high. Never too low. Even though we think it's low, except for maybe in the church sanctuary sometimes. But he constantly is caring for us. We are surrounded by a world that God handcrafted as a place that would meet our needs. And as Jesus walked through the through his uh, Sermon on the Mount, he gave this again to them where he talked about, uh, you know, do not be consumed about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Do not be worried. 
Do not be worried about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. I'm going to take care of it. I'm a God who by my nature will care for you. And I know what you need. As a matter of fact, I know what you need a lot more than what you do. He not only knows about our physical needs, he also knows about our emotional needs. He knows for those of you who are single that you have loneliness. He knows for you that who have gone through hard times, he knows that you are hurting. But our God who cares for us will take care of those needs. But so many times we focus our lives on those things. And we are consumed by them so much that we forget how much God cares for us and how He will take care of those things. Sometimes we're so consumed by those physical needs that we open up ourselves to vulnerability. What Jesus was trying to do, He was letting them know that He, they, the disciples, And they, as Christians, they had an enemy. They had someone who was coming after them. They had someone who was coming to distort the truth. They had someone who was coming to devour them. They had someone who was coming to tear apart their ministry. They had somebody, the enemy, that was coming to break them up. And they needed to be aware that an enemy was prowling. And that they needed to be focused. But yet they were so consumed by their need for food that they did not hear it. And a lot of times we will be so consumed by meeting a need in our life that we'll be opening ourselves to a whole lot of danger. A lot of times we will have certain needs and we think we need it so bad, we'll go out and we'll, we'll steal and we'll take it. Or a lot of times we have such emptiness in our hearts that we'll turn to things like drugs and alcohol. And we'll run our lives into a ground. And everybody around us is saying, you don't need to be doing this. You are destroying yourself. But you don't hear it. You don't hear it because you are so consumed by meeting that need. A lot of times you will be single and you'll be so consumed with your loneliness and your desire to, uh, for companionship. You'll take on a horrible relationship and everybody around you is going to be telling you, you don't need to be in that. This person's going to be bad for you. But you are so consumed by meeting that need that you don't hear it at all. And the disciples were so consumed by what they wanted and what they thought they needed, they left themselves vulnerable because they were not listening to God. Because they were so consumed. And unless you think that this is you and you are some sort of bad person and you just need to come to the altar and let's say a prayer and it'll all be over, Or that there's two groups. There's people that are consumed by what they want. And there are people who have just seemed to move beyond it. But what the disciples face is something that you and I, even as the strongest believers, face on a daily basis. Is that we face this struggle of being distracted by our needs. And our wants are be focused on Jesus. And Jesus brings them to remembrance. As Jesus kind of pours the cold water on them, or maybe he slaps them upside the face. You know, the Bible's really not clear. As he kind of gets them, say, ho, ho, wait upon, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't I do this? Don't you remember this? They were, were able to ref focus and God got their attention to look around and then they were able to see what it is that God was saying and you know what that's the way our whole life is a constant moving away and being consumed by all the bright lights and all the shiny objects that the world has to offer 
chasing after all of these things that we need and God drawing us back. And we just ride this road through our whole life. So what we need to do is this. Instead of being consumed by things, we need to learn to be consumed by Jesus Christ and following Him and trusting Him to take care of all the rest. God knows you need those things. You do know you need those things. But what Jesus says to us is that when you seek me first, when you focus on me, when you focus on pleasing me and doing all of these things that I have for you to do, all of those other things that I already know that you need will be added to you. So what do we need? What do we do? How, how can we help ourselves stay focused? What is it going to take for us to put our faith in Jesus Christ to the point where we are no longer consumed by things? What's going to put us over the edge? What's going to get us off the fence? Well, first I want to tell you about two things that you don't need. What you don't need. And I want to draw you back to the first encounter that I read about the Pharisees and the Sadducees demanding for a sign. Now we all know that Jesus was going throughout all of Jerusalem and all Judea. And he was doing all kinds of signs that we've already mentioned. But here come the Pharisees and the Sadducees and they just want some more evidence. God just give us one more sign and we will believe. You ever been that way? God, just show me one more thing. Lord, just give me one more sign and I will follow you. Just give me one more sign and I'll do what it is that you tell me to. Just give me just one more sign. Just give me one more piece of evidence and I will follow you. But what does Jesus say to them? He says, look. Y'all can perceive the things that are going on around you. You know how to look up in the sky and at the morning and depending on what color the sky is, if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. But you are such an evil and adulterous and corrupt generation that you cannot perceive how God is all around you. And what Jesus says to them is this. This generation does not get another sign. The only sign that you will get is that you will get the sign of Jonah. Now what was the sign of Jonah? Well, he's making a reference to this. Now Jesus, well, that he's talking about Jonah. Now Jonah, we all know that Jonah was off to, didn't want to go to Nineveh. So he was running for God. And he was... Uh, uh, oh, on this ship, and of course, storm comes, he gets thrown off, and he gets swallowed by a whale, and he's in the whale for three days. And after those three days, the whale comes, and he spits him up. And so what he's saying is, the sign of Jonah is this, is that I will die, I will be swallowed up in death, and I will be in the grave for three days, and then I will be raised up, and I will come back again. So the only sign that you need is the evidence that was provided for us by Jesus, his death, and his resurrection. He says that's the sign you get. That's the only thing that you need is to trust and believe in the sign that was given to you through Jesus Christ because you've missed all these other ones. How many times have we been so consumed by what we don't have that we really don't notice how God is working all around us? A lot of times we are focused so much on a problem and on how we think that we can't fix it, we don't realize how God is working all around us to bring a solution to it because we're so consumed. We don't need a sign 
God doesn't need to do anything else for us. The thing that he has already done for us to prove himself and to prove his love for us, he's already done it. God doesn't need to prove himself. It's us. It's us that we need to prove our faithfulness. The second thing that we don't need, not only do we not need more signs or we don't need more proof to get more on fire and more committed to God, but we don't need more information. Think about the disciples. Think about how the the disciples, they were there when Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount. They had the academic knowledge to know that Jesus provides for His people. And that they shouldn't be worried about their food. They shouldn't be worried about their clothes. They shouldn't be worried about any of these things that God will take care of. They were there at the message. They don't need another clever sermon. They don't need another deep insight from Brother Wes or from me to make them more committed. They have all the information, all the head knowledge that you need to live out your life for Jesus. Not only did they have that knowledge, but they were there. They were there for the 5,000. They were there for the 4,000. So they didn't need any more information. We don't need any more information. We don't need any more wisdom. All we need to do is that it's time for us to commit and decide, are we going to follow God and trust Him to take care of us, or are we just going to be, remain consumed by chasing after all these needs and all these wants? It's as simple as that. I know you would love it to be more complicated, something that's a little above our heads so we could just sit here and think about it and say, well, I'll do it as soon as I grasp it or as soon as I can get educated on it or as soon as I can sort it out in my head. But oh no, it's all there. And all that he's waiting on you to do is to take that step forward. But what he says that we need to do, look at how he challenges them here when he's calling them out. He says, you of little faith, do you not perceive or do you not remember? And in those three negatives, if we turn them into positives, then we will see the things that we need to make ourselves more committed. First of all, we need to have faith. We need to have faith in God. If you're going to trust in God and you're going to turn all these things over to Him, you need to have faith in your heart. You need to have faith in your heart that He's able to do those and that He wants those things, wants to do those things in your life. You need to be able to perceive. You need to be able to look around you and see how God is working. And you need to be looking, be able to look at your life and see how God has brought things to fruition in your life and how He's been working and accomplishing the, your things for accomplishing things in your life in the past. And you need to remember. Remember His words. Remember His promise. And remember the things that He has done for you. So where are you at tonight? Where are you at in your heart and in your life? Are you someone who is consumed? Consumed by chasing after things, consumed of chasing after so things that are, are perceived needs that you have in your life? Has it just consumed your life to the point that you've neglected what you really need? Or that you've forgotten your trust in Jesus Christ? Have you just gotten a little off course? Or perhaps you've never heard of Jesus before? He calls out to you tonight. And He calls with this simple call. That you trust in me. And I will take care of the rest. So this evening what we need to do. Is we need to turn all those things over to God. Because He cares for you. He cares about those needs in your life. And so you should turn those things over over to him and say, God, I'm trusting you to take hold of those things. 
I'm going to focus on following you. And Lord, I'm going to trust you to take care of those things. Or maybe you're a point, a, a point in your life where you can't let go or where you can't trust. Then you don't need to pray that prayer because it's not your heart. What you need to do is you need to pray and ask God. Or maybe come down and pray and, and uh, get Wes or, or me to pray for you. And just simply say, God, I just can't let go. I just can't let go of this in my heart, in my life. This is something that is just consuming me. And I just can't let it go. Pray for me. It's in that moment of honesty that God can begin to work in your life. And so this morning, or so this evening, let's be open and honest with God. Let's give an open and honest look inside our hearts about where we at. And let's commit ourselves to letting go and being consumed by God and trusting Him to provide for our needs. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Lord, I just pray.